with one towards the goal. That's going to be blocked by Travis Ridgen. Well, this is more like it. This is Slang in the Biscuit. Here's Travis Ridgen and Dave Wheeler. Ladies and gentlemen, lads and ladies, uh, my name is Travis Ridgen. I'm the new number 31 for the Mississippi Seawolves in the FPHL. Joined to the left of my Zoom screen is David Wheeler. He hosts the number one morning radio show in the city of Winnipeg. Dave, how are you down there? Man, I did. Why'd you stop the accent? I don't know. What, did, you, did you have a seizure or something? What happened? Are you switching from personality to personality? I don't know what's going on here. What, what are you talking about, David? Boy, oh boy. Now, listen, I absolutely love language. I love accents. And you were doing a little bit of a, uh, you're, you're, you're like a mockingjay. You hear something and you can replicate it. And I think that's a great skill to have. And you were doing a little bit for me. I'll be honest with you, for a guy who's only been down there for a week and a week and change. That's uh, it's not bad, but I, I also credit you for watching enough movies that you've probably already had that in the recesses of your brain somewhere that you could pull forward. Not even. I actually, so I've been down here situated in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi for about three days. Uh, I was on a coffee date yesterday, and this lady had an incredible uh, southern accent, and she also commented on my Canadian accent, and I was picking up on the intricacies of how she was talking, and here we are now. I'm talking just like that. Well, it's amazing. You know what they say, the Canadian accent. Uh, I went out to Boston once upon a time, and I was so excited to hear that khakis, you know, the classic joke, uh, that Boston, that Southie kind of accent. And and I didn't get it. And I asked somebody, they said, you know, the, the next generation is coming up. They're being raised on Netflix and a very neutral kind of accent. So a lot of that's making its uh, making way of the dinosaur. But when it comes to that area, it's still very, very uh, prevalent in in the culture down there, and the f- the further south you go, they get more into like your tongue, almost like you drop the the root, the the, the floor of your tongue, and it becomes more of a draw. The, like the more closer you get to Texas, oh, it's all of that stuff fascinates me, and I love it. Speaking of Texas, I want to give a shout out to uh, one of my teammates, my new goalie partner, Joe Shepard. By the way, Dave just had a, uh, a shepherd's pie in the oven before we started recording. I texted Dave. I said, hey, I'm getting to the rink early, which if you're on the video version of the show, you see we're at the rink. We're in my stall. we got all three beautiful Mississippi jerseys behind me. And I said, Dave, can you get ready to go early? He says, I got a shepherd's pie in the oven, sir. I will not be ready a minute before or a minute earlier. Technically, I lied to you. I, I did lie to you. Technically, I used ground beef instead of ground lamb. So technically, it's a cottage pie, not a shepherd's pie. But whatever. How, how dare you call me out on it? That's <laughs> nah, okay. I've, I've been getting used to getting lied to this season. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, Patreon exclusive episode? <laughs> well, listen, it's a great opportunity. Might as well throw it out now. If you're not a Patreon member, now's the time to sign up. And Why? Because you get some incredibly exclusive perks. Uh, if you want some of the exclusive episodes that were removed previously uh, for having too strong content, you can join the Patreon page for five bucks a month. You get access to that. You get access to uh, my incredible trading cards from Motor City, Varberg, and Sweden, the regular collector set, the holographic print set. And also, if you join the premium membership for, I believe, 20 bucks a month, you get the uh, Sling the Biscuit mug, awesome white crispy mug to have your uh, coffee in, and an awesome Sling the Biscuit fluffy plush sweater it's fantastic you'll love falling asleep with it i guarantee you if you have a girlfriend she will steal it uh, i don't know why i'm talking like this again but she will steal it so you should join the patreon page and if we get uh, 100 members i will do every episode talking like this you know listen it's uh you, you almost got into a little bit of will ferrell there from talladega night so I'll, I'll forgive you for that one but that's a very different accent than the one that uh, that that you're experiencing right now but man i've, I've been to nolens before and uh, uh, I could see Baton Rouge off in the distance, but I've never—I haven't been to Biloxi yet. But I'm very much looking forward to continuing with that southern hospitality. God, Biloxi is uh, Biloxi's fantastic. Uh, so to be fair, I've been here three days, four days, three, uh, three days, whatever it's been. Uh, the sun has not come out, so I haven't seen the sun in about a week and a half. But the beaches are awesome. I haven't seen a single soul there, so I can't wait. Because keep in mind, this is winter time for these people, so they don't want to really go to the beach. But hey, I'm from Canada. It is uh, like 65, maybe 70. I will happily go on the beach in the middle of the day once the sun comes out after practice and no uh, no winter. By the way, all the uh, all the time and the effort I spent, you know, kind of dialing in like a nice winter wardrobe in uh, Watertown, all for nothing. None of that. Uh, none of those wardrobes work here. I need to get some shorts and uh, some polos and maybe some nice. Um, Nice sneakers for the beach. Well, listen, I know you want to get into a bit of a conspiracy theory uh, a little bit later on in the show, but can I tell you something that um, 
it's not really a, uh, a a conspiracy, but it's a theory, a really good one too. But technically, you are actually in one of the safest spots in the entire world. Maybe not necessarily when it comes to uh, demographics, but when it comes to the possibility of a uh, world-ending event as far as a meteorite hitting the Earth, you are literally on the edge of where one of them hit once upon a time, which is why you have the Gulf of Mexico. If you look at a map, boom, like, like there are dinosaur fossils all the way down like if you draw a straight line from where you are down to the yucatan peninsula they're finding dinosaur bones there like crazy they're finding aquatic life like they haven't been able to find the bottom of the gulf of mexico yet like i shouldn't say that but they I mean it is deep and it is a crater that was hit by, by a meteorite so what are the odds of it happening twice you're in a good spot how deep specifically good question i could google that quick for you if you really wanted the answer but it's deep well, why don't we? Uh, why don't I tell a uh, story that nobody cares about, and you Google that, and uh, we'll get on with that. By the way, have you ever heard of Courtney Ryan, Dave? This was on the uh, notes for today. You know Courtney, R- Courtney Ryan. Refresh my memory. Okay, so Courtney Ryan is a YouTuber influencer. She does like uh, men's advice for like style, fashion, um, just how to be a better man. And God damn, she is hot. She is she is a Biloxi fifteen. She is a beautiful woman, and uh, she is my new woman crush. I just wanted to tell everybody else. Tell, tell everybody on the podcast about that. Does she have um, an accent? Uh, maybe. I think she, <laughs> she's definitely American. She has an accent. What kind? I don't know. Um, definitely not from Canada, I don't think. Maybe somebody in the video version of the show would know. But uh, I did I did have uh, a story I wanted to tell because she was doing a, uh, a talk the other day on a video I was watching about uh, women who show you unconditional love. And I thought of a story that I thought that, uh, Dave, you would love. Now, uh, I had a girlfriend a couple years ago. You got that for about two years. And... Uh, this girl came over one time, and now, this is a little bit gross, I had a wart on the bottom of my foot, okay? Oh, thank God right? you said foot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I could have gone a couple different directions, but um, I had a wart on the bottom of my foot, and she saw this wart, and she says, you know what? I'm going to kill this thing. She went to shoppers. She she got a um, uh, a scalpel, and uh, sorry, the accents keep coming back, and uh, <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a twitch. I have to get it out of my system. Yeah, you do, because I'll be honest with you, if you're not careful, people will think that you're making fun of them, and if you run into the wrong person, oh boy. Uh, so she had the uh, the scalpel, and she got like some like foam, and every night for like two, three months, she would like stab at it and puck, like, pluck it out until either it would bleed or I would scream, and then put like some foam in there and then bandage it up. And then after about three months, it went away. And then she kind of had to find something else to do. I think she started crocheting after that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's my story for the week. Uh, how about a uh, good life hack for that one? Uh, from what I understand, duct tape works really well. Whatever it is in the glue helps break down, break down the ward a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think she did like a little like bandage and then a little bit of tape on top. So yeah, she uh, was... Uh, t- just yeah. over two and a half miles deep, by the way. Wow. Wow. That's uh, That would be about the Titanic step, no? Titanic at the bottom of the ocean? Great question. I can Google it if you like. <laughs> I have more stories. <laughs> um, I, here's one story for you. So this is new for this season in the FPHL, and then we'll get into the main topic for today's episode. So last year in uh, Motor City, I was paid in checks that for the life of me, I couldn't cash anywhere outside of this extremely sketchy uh, Russian like uh, market. So you could buy like fruits and vegetables and meats and then also cash your checks at the lottery center. And so that was what I did. I cashed them, got money, brought it across the border. This year... Uh, I have a feeling this has something to do with me posting about the checks. So they, the league has decided to give us prepaid visa ma- or prepaid visa cards, right? And so we have the prepaid visa cards, and the league puts money into the account. Now I didn't know this, so before I left Watertown last week, I was I was genuinely afraid someone in the league and the team, somebody was going to drain the account and take all my money out of there. So I literally went to the ATM, I pulled all the money out of the uh, visa card they gave me. And so I had this cash on me, and then I get to, uh, to Bluxy the other day, and one of the guys says, you do realize that's, uh, like, you put money in, like, nothing can come out. Like, nobody has the ability to pull money out. So if somebody was to get overpaid, like, somebody, let's say, pays me instead of, you know, 200 bucks a week, they send me $2,000. It's like, well, sorry. Either you give us the money back, or there's nothing we can do about it. So that was uh, that was interesting to learn about. Hmm. So I spent about 30 bucks on transaction fees in an ATM that I didn't actually need to spend on. So that, that was the story I was trying to tell. Lesson learned, man. Sometimes you got to learn it the hard way. Yeah. It, by the it's way, the, way uh, by, by the uh, Gulf of Mexico is deeper than where the Titanic is. Titanic's only about 12, uh, 12,500 feet. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, to the meat and potatoes today, David, what do you say? Sure, I just had a uh, cottage pie, so bring on some more. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> you said it was shepherd's pie. No, I, I had cottage pie. I had cottage pie, for the record. 
<laughs> for, so for those that don't know, what is the difference though? Shepherd's pie, cottage pie? Sh- no. Shepherd's pie is, uses lamb. Cottage pie is ground beef. My mom makes a fantastic uh, cottage pie, by the way. Just uh, mm. saying, shout out to her. She listens every single week. Mom, I miss you very much. I hope you're well. I know she's listening on Monday while she's working. But uh, anyway, the uh, meat potatoes of the podcast. You ready to rock and roll? Let's go. So uh, last week, I commuted from Watertown, New York, down to Withville, Virginia. Now, originally, I was trying to make my life as complicated as I possibly could, as I normally do. And I was going to take a train from Watertown sorry, from Syracuse to Detroit, and then from Detroit I was going to fly down to New Orleans and then get picked up and then come down. And then I got on the phone with the legend Joe Pace, the founder, the builder of Minor Pro Hockey, and he says, this isn't 1800. You don't have to take a plane and a train and a horse and a buggy. You can just get a rental car. I said, what? A rental car? He's like, yeah, you can pick it up and then just drive it and then drop it off. I didn't know this. So I literally went down to the Watertown Airport I picked up a rental car, and uh, by the way, at the Watertown Airport, I did want to say I did see a guy driving a lawnmower uh, <laughs> through the uh, the terminal parking lot. I don't know why, but uh, maybe like for the valet. I'm so, <laughs> anyway, anyway, maybe he was mowing the lawn. <laughs> there was no lawn to be mowed. It was right to the parking lot. Anyway, um, enough Watertown stories. So I pick up uh, the rental car, and uh, I ripped it all the way down from Watertown to uh, Withville, Virginia, about a 12, 12 and a half hour drive by the time coffees, uh, food at Chipotle, gas breaks, sightseeing breaks, drone breaks. By the way, I'll put some video on the video version of the show. West Virginia, I rolled up uh, this hill. So now, sorry, let me back this up. The Adirondacks in upstate New York were very beautiful, uh, Pennsylvania as well. But I rolled up this hill in West Virginia with the rental car. And when I went over it, I was smacked in the face with incredible scenery, with mountains, valleys, Fall colors, like you couldn't believe. Obviously, you'll see if you're on the video version of the show, if you're on the Apple Spotify version. Okay, well, I've never been down in that area, but if I can compare it to what it's like up in eastern Ontario, kind of Quebec area, the the deep reds that they get. I mean, it, here in Manitoba, kind of in the central, you get a, a deeper shade of orange, not even like a yellow. It goes straight from green to yellow. But yeah, you just got this beautiful cornucopia of, of really nice fall colors all the way through. Did you enjoy the drive? It was actually very, very enjoyable. It was very smooth, very nice. Now, once so you said about 11 hours all the way down, start to finish? Uh, 12 and a half. And by the way, uh, I listened to all the radio stations and all the frequencies that I picked up along the way. Very similar to your former employer, 92 City FM. I still think you have the greatest radio show out there. Aw, shucks. Thanks, man. And you can tell uh, your morning show radio host, Tyler Carr, the uh, your producer, Adam West, and uh, the girl as well, that uh, I listen to just about every rock radio station from upstate New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Nothing compares to uh, Wheeler in the Morning on Energy any 106. Stand, any standout, uh, standouts at least? Um, Not really. They didn't do a lot of talking, a lot of music playing, but I listen to morning shows for talking, and it's why we do the show together. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I do have a question for you. You said it was uh, 12 hours that, that it took you to get from spot to spot? Uh, yeah, with all the, the stops I made along the way, yes. Did you count those in pucks? <laughs> hey, what time is it in Withville? <laughs> I don't know what time is it in Withville. It's 12 past region. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, can, Shall- can we get into that? Can we get into that? Or do you want to tell more stories? Because I think everyone wants to hear about that. Oh, let, let's see. What else do I have in the notes? Uh, I did want to give a shout out to uh, to Rob Primo. He's one of the boosters from Watertown. And uh, he, he was fantastic to me from day one. He was the one, he's one of the videos you see uh, cooking all the meals, the oh, yeah. uh, delivering the pizza, the taco bar, the quesadilla bar, all that stuff. So Rob, you are a beauty. And to top it all off, top it all off on my way out the door, out of town, he literally made me a, like a bucket of protein balls. He makes the best monster cookie protein balls, probably like 30, maybe 40 protein balls. So uh, I snacked on those the entire way there. And Rob, thank you so much. They were awesome, by the way. They're really, really, really awesome. Travis sure. Ridgen, snacking on, uh, what was his name? Uh, Rob Primo. Snacking on Rob's balls all the way down to Withville. <laughs> Chewing on them the whole way home. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I, I drove down. I did the 12-and-a-half-hour uh, drive. Met the team, uh, my Mississippi Sea Wolves in uh, Withville, Virginia. Now, uh, this is where – this is actually the reason why everybody's listening to the show. But we got to tell you about the presenting sponsor for the show, as we always do, the team at Sheath Underwear. David. When you are in the south and you are sweating, you are definitely going to want to have a pair of underwear that is built 
to uh, accommodate that, you're going to want to make sure that your dick and your balls are separated and they're not stuck to the side of your leg, bat winging, which is why Sheath Underwear has been the presenting sponsor for this show since day one. They have the incredible bamboo mesh technology to keep you cool and comfortable and keep you aerated. They also have the dual pouch technology to keep your dick in your bag. Sling your biscuit through that basket in that pair of gitchies so that... <laughs> so that, <laughs> so that so that you can be comfortable on your road trips, as I was. I wore a sheath underwear for my entire road trip. And uh, I probably could have worn a pair of sheath uh, for my debut, that's for sure. But uh, I have learned for this upcoming weekend, and you too can learn by picking up a pair of sheath underwear from the link in the video description on the YouTube podcast or the Apple Spotify podcast and notes. You click that link, and then you're going to go to sheathunder.com. Use the code BISCUIT69, B-I-Z-K-I-T-69, for the greatest pair of underwear that money can buy. Sheath is the logo and the name brand on all of my gear. Again, they have been the presenting sponsor for the show for, what, almost a year and a half, Dave, since you and I started together, and uh, yeah. they are incredible. Yeah. And, and, you, and you know what they call sheath in Creole, right? What do they call that? Sheath! That's what I was saying after I got yanked. <laughs> oh, I think a lot of people were saying that. Man, I loved reading the comments down in the uh, the YouTube. Holy moly. Whew. Uh, uh, I'll tell you this, Dave. I've gotten to the point where uh, I don't respond to uh, Instagram comments no more. I don't really check my YouTube comments, and I definitely don't check my Instagram messages, especially after that weekend. Not a single message that I look at. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. Uh, now... I gotta you want be me to honest. break down. You want me to? Oh, sorry. You go ahead. You go ahead. First. Well, listen. I I know. For those that don't know, let's just uh, let's just call a spade a spade here. It was an ugly one. Uh, if you look at the wheat sheet and the, what was the twelve seven final, twelve six final. Well, we'll get to that in a second. We had the first game. Don't forget about that, though. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's start there, please. All right. So let's start there. So I uh, do the twelve hour drive, get into the hotel at the uh, Comfort Inn in uh, Withville, Virginia. We had morning skate on Friday morning. I was feeling really good in morning skate. We played Friday night. Now shout out to my goalie partner Joe Shepard. He got the uh, the start. He got the nod. I was backing up. Sheps went. I want to say forty six of forty nine for the five three win. Might have been the six three win with the empty netter. And so we got the W. Now uh, the next day, I had the start. Now let me tell you. How do you think? I was told by the legendary Joe Pace that I was starting. Uh, text message. No. I was showering after the first game. Now, in Withville, they have a really weird shower setup. They have a curtain, and I had the curtain closed, and I was showering on myself, and all of a sudden, Joe Pace comes out of nowhere and uh, rips open the shower curtain. He's like, hey, you're starting tomorrow. Closes the shower curtain and then runs away. And then about 10 seconds later, he comes back. He opens the shower curtain. He's like, why are you showering with the curtain? Leave that thing open. <laughs> so that's how I found out I was starting the game, by the way. Oh, well, thanks, boss. <laughs> yeah, good to see you, too. We'll get to more Joe Pace stories later. This is going to be a new segment of the show and now that uh, I have uh, 24-7 access to Mr. Pace. but It, it, it sounds, sounds to me like Joe Pace got a new toy and couldn't wait to take it out of the packaging and start playing with it. <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> so let's get into this game. So I got the start against uh, with Phil, and um, it, it, it was a tough one. I'm not going to lie. So uh, four goals on 14 shots in about nine minutes of play. Yeah, um, I was four inside the first 10. That's how I was equating it. Yeah, we, we ran into some penalty trouble. Uh, the fir first goal, if I'm not mistaken, I'll put the video in the video version of the show. Uh, first goal, my former teammate in Watertown, we were both released, uh, Josh Newberg. 36 years young, rips a shot, going glove side, off the D-man, shin pad, goes back blocker side, in. First goal. The second goal, I got to give credit where credit was due. It was an absolute rip by, um, oh, uh, it was the, the defenseman ripped a shot in the power play off my off my collarbone. I dropped it, and the guy in front of me whacked it, and I extended my leg. I made the save, and then Kyle Stevens, the former Binghamton Black Bear, had the open cage and buried that one in. And then the third goal Again, Kyle Stevens. I, I, oh, I, I want to say we turned the puck over the blue line. Their guy, he froze me with the with the puck in front of the D man skates, and they made a real quick pass pass right back door to Kyle Stevens, and he just ripped it over my glove top shelf. Great shot by him. And the fourth goal. This one was kind of a tough one. It was um, on the on the far side uh, blocker side post, and I was in my my reverse VH my integration there. And the guy was able to make a pass all the way across, uh, I would say maybe three feet above the crease to the guy back door who, uh, it should have been a save. I didn't integrate properly and get a nice... You know uh, what, a lot of them should have been saves. 
We'll get to more of that in a second, Dave. And uh, I can't remember who shot it, but whoever shot it buried that one. Four goals and 14 shots. I got the yank. I was out. And uh, God damn, did that Withville crowd really enjoy that. Uh, they didn't give it to me as much as the Binghamton Black Bears did when I got yanked in Watertown, but boy, did that crowd enjoy that. Um, and also the Withville Arena, I will say, though, not to get too off topic, uh, very nice arena. I would say it's like a jumbo Delaware arena. They were selling cattle in there maybe eight, nine months ago, like full on like selling cows in the arena or the, the barn. And uh, they just built the arena and just plunked it right down in the middle of the cattle farm. And that's the Withville Arena. That makes sense, man. When it comes to those communities, the idea of multi-purpose really rings true. Yeah. Uh, speaking of multi-purpose, that's perfectly on brand because I got yanked. Uh, my goalie partner, Joe Shepard, goes in. He gives up four goals on, I want to say, 15, maybe 20 shots. I could be incorrect, uh, which we'll get to in a second. And then about mid-second period, uh, Sheps comes out. I go back in. Uh, we're down 8 to, I want to say 8-2, maybe 8-3, maybe 8-1. It's somewhere in that ballpark. And then... Um, uh, I held the fort down for the next, like, 20-ish minutes. And then mid-third period, Withville started to open it up again. Um, it was a 2 on one uh, screen. Pass uh, right to the slot. Nice shot goes in. Uh, the – what was the other goal? I'm having a hard time remembering. Uh, the other goal <laughs> – sorry, the, that would have been the ninth, the tenth goal. Uh, guy on the far side, pass all the way across for the one-timer. Off my shoulder, off the post, over, right on the guy's tape. The same guy who made the original pass, and my thought process was, I don't really have a chance at like getting there, so my only hope is to try to not get in the way of getting it banked off me, kind of like the Binghamton goal. So I tried to wait for him to shoot it like off me, and he didn't. So the puck went in, and then um, another pass back door, five hole squeaker. I didn't like that one. Uh, on the pass, that was the reverse of the fourth goal, which would have been just a reverse integration, C cut back, bump over, make the save, and then the twelfth goal. I can't remember how that one went. I'm having a hard time. It's a lot of goals. 12 past <laughs> Richard, right? That's a lot of goals. It just became it just a blur at one point. I don't know. I blacked out. I don't know what happened. It just, I, I woke up. Someone gave, given me the defib. Uh, listen, man, I, I, I know 12 is an ugly number, but when you look at the wheat sheet and you see that, uh, that they put 61 shots on net, it makes it a little more palatable. <sighs> Okay, so here's my breakdown. First off, why don't you give me your breakdown, Dave? What did you see as somebody watching on the uh, 480p with Phil broadcast? I'll tell you what I didn't see was a lot of defense, and I'm not. And I, 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 that could have just been an anomaly. Uh, I, I saw some nerves. I saw some nerves out of you. I, I, I saw you kind of. I'm not saying I'm trying to get into your head or whatnot, but I think you remember like, all right, glove hand, blocker hand, you know, kind of doing through the whole check there and going. Okay, it, it's. I, I don't. I don't want to say you look like Ronda Rousey when she went and defended her title in UFC, but you, you you kind of felt like okay, I'm meant to be here, and then you just like I said, blacked out for a second or two, and then it, by the time you caught your brain caught up, it was too late. Honestly, I wasn't nervous. If I'm being fully honest, there was no. There's like a healthy bit of nerves for every game, but as far as actually being nervous to it affect my performance, that didn't exist. Uh, a lot of people were messaging me. Uh, you know, did the the travel the day before affect you? I don't think so. I, I thought that I did a fantastic job rolling out the night before, rolling out from morning skate on Friday and Saturday. So like, I, I felt good. So that's not an excuse I'm going to use. Um, I honestly, I think just fantastic shots made by fantastic players. Again, I'll give credit to Josh Newberg. I played with him in Watertown. He's a good player. I don't know why they released him, but they did. Um, Kyle Stevens, I believe he was picked up in the draft from Binghamton for Withville, a great player as well. Um, I definitely settled in more after, like, in the second appearance because I went, I want to say I went four for 30-ish. Sorry, four goals on 30 shots-ish compared to the four on 14, which obviously doubled the save percentage, but still not a great performance. Um, as far as the goals themselves go, I thought two were preventable. The other six were just you have to find a way to make a save. There's not like some tech class, but like, oh, I didn't see cut back or I didn't do this. That was my only breakdown of it. That puck handling was fine. There was no turnovers. Every time I was making contact from my tape to our guy's tape and getting the puck out, I was trying to move the puck out as well. Um, and that Did was really you, my... Uh, I'm kind of curious to know what your mentality was in between. My mentality when, when I got the yank and then before going back in, and a lot of people are going to take this out of context, which so be it, I'm at a point in my life at 27, almost 20 years old, where I really don't care 
about hockey the same way that I used to as a kid. And what I mean by that is when I was, let's say, 17 years old at the Prince George Cougars main camp, I was so invested. Like, I have to perform. I have to. And if I didn't, it was the end of the world, right? Or play, playing junior hockey or even, like, college hockey, the same thing. I'm at a point now where I just I don't have that same level of care. And it's not in the way of, like, well, I don't really care what happens. I'm here. Where's my paycheck? You know what I mean? Like, I just I don't care. Like, it, it doesn't bother me. Does You've learned ex- to compartmentalize it. Yeah, does that does that kind of make sense though, Dave? What I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna sit there and beat yourself up and you know give yourself lashes at night. You're you're gonna try and say, okay, it is what it is. Instead of looking back, look forward. What can I do to get back in the cage? Exactly, and we, we've talked about this on previous episodes of the podcast. But you know, playing for my former employers, uh, plural, doesn't define me. The Mississippi Sea Wolves don't define me. The FPHL doesn't define me. There isn't a single person or thing in this lifetime that defines me outside of me. And once I started embracing that, I just kind of stopped caring. Like the you know the eight goals and sixty or, or twelve goals and sixty shots that doesn't define me. It it just doesn't bother me. It's like well, all right, well, I, we got practice on Monday. I got to roll out later tonight. We got a game. We got a home opener against Columbus River Dragons this weekend. Like it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? And to be honest with you, I feel like you know me talking about not caring as much and that it doesn't bother me makes the trolls and the keyboard warriors that much more angry because they're like, no. You should care. Why don't you care? I'm going to type something really nasty in the comments to make you care. Yeah, they uh, want sh- you to melt down. Yeah, they want to have, make me have a meltdown, but I just generally don't care. It doesn't bother me. And also, too, here's another thing that's really going to piss the keyboard warriors off. Hate only comes up the ladder. It never goes down. I've never in my life ever been disrespected by somebody who's up the ladder from me or on the similar plane. Only people that are down looking up. Like almost like crabs in a bucket. Does that make sense? Because for any player in the FPHL to shit on me would be them shitting on themselves because we're playing at the same league at the same level, my friend. Um, for anybody above, why would you waste your time on somebody who's below you? Uh, you're only trying to knock somebody down if you're under them, right? And I think that really pisses off a lot of people because I don't care. And also, too, we've talked about this before. There's nothing special about me or about my game, Dave. I'm just some monkey who decided I know how to press record in a camera and upload on YouTube. That is it. I'm big. I'm six foot five. I can hit right time, right place with pucks. That's it. I don't have any overwhelming abilities. The problem with that is because I haven't quit hockey is because I reflect back to a lot of these keyboard warriors what they never did. And so when somebody sees what I'm doing, that, oh, he's still playing hockey, 27, almost 28 years old. I quit at 19. I quit at 14. I shouldn't have. Well, I can't. I can't get back into hockey, but I can shit on them. I'm going to leave a nasty comment. That's the mindset of these people, which, hey, if you're doing that, good on you. This is fantastic because, again, that, that powers the algorithm for this podcast, and you get us, us, us out to so many more people, and we had almost 12,000, over 12,000 listeners last week. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And then for the vlog, same thing. It helps power the vlog as well. So uh, I really generally don't care. It doesn't really bother me. I still showed up at practice on Monday with a smile. I will show up to Columbus on Friday with a smile, and I will show up for a home opener on Saturday with a smile. Well, I'll be honest with you, man. That's uh, it's a good lesson to learn early because uh, when you get to my age, uh, it's really hard to hurt my feelings. So you know the fact that you're the fact that you're getting that lesson now, you're gonna be you're gonna be ironclad by the time you hit forty. I know, and you got twenty more years on me, so it's nice that I'm finally coming around and listening to you for once. Twenty, right? easy, easy. How how old are you there, old man? Forty four. I thought you were 31. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Man, they, you know, in certain parts of the, uh, depending on what uh, what time zone it's in, I do get a little bit younger. In dog years, I'm still in my teens. <laughs> speaking of dogs, speaking of speaking of dogs, say if yeah, yeah, you want, hey, dog, you get, you, you like, oh, you dogs, oh, dogs, yeah, I like dogs. Um, you uh, are you? Uh, there's a lot of animals down in that area. I'm curious to know, are you staying in an area where you can get yourself a little uh, little short legged thing? Oh, yeah. So, okay. So last week's podcast, I thought I cleared the air. Some people were upset. Um, We're talking about my beagle breeding idea. Yeah. Okay. So I had this idea a couple weeks ago that I wanted to get two purebred beagles in my apartment for Vancouver this summer and then have them breed and then sell puppies. And this seemed like a great idea until I realized, well, first off, it's not humane to do that. It's not humane. It's not humane to anybody listening to the podcast to do that in a 500 square foot apartment. And also you're going to profit at a net loss. So I am not going to be breeding puppies this summer. That is not what I'm going to be doing just to clear the air on that for anybody wondering. But uh, speaking of dogs and uh, absolute builders in the league, why don't we we talk about Joe Pace for a second? 
the Jackie Moon of the Federal Prospects Hockey League. I was uh, lucky enough to have a face-to-face with him before we started recording this podcast today via Zoom. So, uh, man, he's a handsome devil, isn't he? The owner, player, coach, the only general manager in professional hockey history to trade himself at the trade deadline for a chance to win a championship. <laughs> God love him. Well, I got a couple of Joe Pace stories for you. So first off, we've we've talked about Joe Pace. He's been like this like mythical creature, at you know like a uh, like a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, like a leprechaun. You hear about these things, but you never actually see them. You know what I mean? But now that you know he is my boss, he is my coach, my general manager, my my teammate as well. Now that I've gotten a you know a front row seat to the Joe Pace show, let, let me tell you, Dave, this guy is a bigger legend than I thought. I'll tell you this first, and he literally sits right beside me in a locker room. Like I'm sitting right here, he sits right there. And the first thing he said to um, to our equipment guy, it was our social media guy. He said, "What uh, what number is Travis going to wear?" And Joe says, "He's going to wear 31." And we said, "Why?" He's like, "Well, I wear 13, so he's got to wear 31. It's the inverse of 13." I don't know. Joe doesn't have an accent, by the way. I, I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, <laughs> Practicing. <laughs> for that, it, it's his twitch. I just got to get this twitch out of my system. But uh, yeah, so I'm wearing 31. Joe's wearing 13. And uh, just a couple stories about Joe Pace. First off, so uh, the team housing. Uh, I show up at the team housing on Sunday when we came back from the road trip, and Joe says, "What do you What do you think?" He's pointing this like little box contraption he's building, and I said, "I said, well, it, it looks nice. I, what is it?" He's like, "It's a chicken coop, you dummy. We're gonna get chickens in. You're gonna have fresh eggs every morning for the team housing." What an innovator! Amazing. What a great idea. Literally, we're going to have creme brulees, scrambled eggs, quiche every morning. How fantastic is that? Have you ever washed the poop off an egg before? I have not. You're about to. I'm going to learn to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had that there. Uh, a couple other things Joe says to me. So at, at morning skate, Joe says to me, he says, I keep aiming blocker side, but I keep hitting your glove. Like, am I doing something wrong? And I said, oh, Joe, my gloves are in the wrong hand. That's why. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, that makes so much more sense because I always go for the – I have a very strategic way I shoot the puck, and you know, I go left, left, right, 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 left, 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 right, kind of like in the Simpsons movie. You know, the guy's talking about having guards, and he says, I want them aligned soft, tough, tough, soft, tough, soft. <laughs> so you've gone mad with power. <laughs> I was thinking more of it's the uh, the blood code for Mortal Kombat on the old Sega Genesis. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, <laughs> A, B, A, C, start. Oh, he's just like button mashing. Yeah. <laughs> the cheat codes. Um, there's that. And then also, um, so living situation. You asked about my living situation last week, right? Yep. Okay, so I have an actual update for you. So I came to the team housing, and unfortunately, we are completely full. Now, part of this is my fault because I could go to the team hotel. Unfortunately, I don't have a vehicle. Uh, Biloxi is not very walkable, like the way the Watertown or Sweden was. Um, like the nearest Starbucks is like 10 kilometers away, so it's going to be about a three-hour walk, three-hour back to get to where I need to go. So I'm at the team housing for right now, sleeping on a mattress in the living room. Now, we talk about Joe Pace being a builder, correct? A builder of minor pro hockey? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm out there. I'm with you. This man literally is building me a room. Now, not him specifically. He has hired uh, Yanni, Yanni Lirakos. Damn it, I can't say his name properly. It's just, it, it, I got a big tongue. Say it, say it, say it in a southern accent. Uh, his name is uh, Yanni Lirakos, and uh, he is building my bedroom right now as we speak. Uh, he's being contracted. He's got the uh, the leveler. Um, he's got the air nailer and uh, some boards, and he's building the bedroom as we speak. And it should hopefully be done by Monday, uh, maybe end of next week. So he literally is building me a bedroom right now. I'll be going to say this reminds me of an old Mitch Hedberg stand-up bit where he says, I was going through a house with my real estate agent, and the ad said, three-bedroom. And I thought, what if I want to put a mattress in the kitchen? This bedroom has a refrigerator in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So listen, I mean, I mean, like, so are they taking like the dining room and turning it into a room? Like, like what's going on? You gotta, you gotta walk me through this. Sorry, I, I should have painted a better picture. So the team housing is a former warehouse, ten thousand square foot warehouse, which the team bought and they sectioned it off into an upstairs and a downstairs. And the upstairs, about half of it, they built. Uh, but like brand new everything. So we got like a brand new shower, brand new kitchen. We have four bedrooms, maybe five bedrooms in there. And then the rest of the house, they're still working on. And then the upstairs are the same thing, four or five bedrooms, and then still working on some other um, uh, like rooms within the house. And then there's another house that has the rest of the bedrooms. Now, um, because of fire code, you have to get certain permits to do certain building, uh, like different rooms and different things. 
And so there's about 10, maybe 12 bedrooms done. The rest need permits, and they're going to uh, finish building them. But, um, yeah, so that's basically the setup. Does that kind of make sense or not really, Dave? Well, well, the... I- <laughs> I actually, crazily, uh, this I this past week I saw a video of a place in New York that was kind of doing the same thing. Now you you if you, if you were six feet tall, your feet were touching the, uh, the, the each wall and your head was touching the wall. But the idea was the same same thing. You build all these kind of little tiny rooms in an old warehouse, and then there's a common area, and there's a kitchen area, and there's a bathroom area, and everyone kind of shares those. But you just so like how big is your bedroom? Uh, in the room that they're building me, or currently? Well, I'm assuming that uh, a mattress in the middle of the floor is, you know, probably not a great way to explain. But, I mean, the one that they're building you, I mean, is it enough just for – is like a college dorm size? Yeah, I would say college dorm size. If I had to enough guess – Enough for a single bed? Yeah, oh, for sure. Definitely enough for a single bed. If I had to guess, I'm going to say uh, – hold on. My apartment in Vancouver is 500 square feet. I would say about 125, maybe 150 square feet for my actual room. I think it's a fair guess. Maybe I'm wrong. I okay. Don't know. Maybe, maybe I just don't know how to use a measuring tape properly and estimate square footage. Um I also didn't graduate college, so that could be it. <laughs> so, you, so you got closet space, you've got a little desk area. Yeah, a little bit of everything. And okay, then we got, the, so like I said, the brand new kitchen. We have a fantastic kitchen, nice fridge. Uh, we don't have laundry, so I have been doing laundry at the rink. Um, so the uh, Mississippi Coast Coliseum is about, uh, it was built in the 1970s, huge arena. And uh, I come here and I do my laundry at the rink. So the, some of the, uh, the maintenance staff, they're kind of giving me some looks yesterday. Uh, when I came in, I was doing my laundry. They went to work, and then after practice, I came back about half dressed with my pants, and you know my uh, my pads were off, my chest protector was off, but everything else was on. And I'm just like flipping a load of laundry, and they're looking at me like, "What is this man doing in here with equipment doing laundry after practice? This does not make any sense." Now, listen, are you going to have to get into a Connor Bedard situation? Because from what I understand, they're basically just cutting him a key for the rink because the kid never leaves. So, I mean, are you going to be doing the majority of your work there and come and go as you please, or is it more of you're only allowed in at certain times? That actually doesn't sound like a bad idea because the Starbucks is about a. Uh, but a nine-minute walk from the arena, from right here, um, I could live here and just film videos, do the pod, doing the podcast right now in the um, uh, in the team locker room. That's fantastic. So yeah, maybe that that should be what we do. We should give me a key for the uh, the Mississippi Coast Coliseum and just have him be here full time. Yeah, just if you're gonna build you a room, build you a room there. I could just get like um, uh, what do you, what do you call it? like the the portable burners, the portable like stove tops. You know what I mean? Oh you take yeah. Yeah, take one of those, get a couple pots and pans. I can start cooking. We got really high ceilings in the arena, so I can have all the propane fumes I want. Nothing bad will happen. Um, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> uh, what happened to the propane tanks? Uh, Ridgen has them. Did you just hit? <laughs> hook up to the back what of was the Zamb- <laughs> Hook up a barbecue to the back of the Zamboni. <laughs> oh, did I ever tell you when I used to work as a Zamboni driver at the rink or no? Yeah, oh yeah. You told me those stories back in the day, yeah. Do we talk about uh, switching up the propane tanks late at night or no? Nope. Okay, so the propane, the Zamboni ran on propane. You had two propane cylinders, and sometimes um, I would get very, very lazy late at night, and I would just want to go home because I'm paid hourly. And um, the one propane tank would empty, and you're supposed to switch to the other one, and then when you get off the ice, you replace the other one. Um, I would get lazy, and I would just not replace the other one. So when the other guy came in in the morning, he would run out of gas, flip it to the other one, and still be out of gas. And he would get <laughs> stuck in the middle of the ice. And keep in mind, it's just pouring hot water. So um, you would see the Zamboni sinking into the ice, and it was not good. It was real bad. I got some really nasty text messages when that happened. <laughs> so you weren't a uh, great rank attendant either. Got it. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, and funny enough how that works to kind of come full circle back to the uh, prepaid visa situation with my former employer. Uh, they were paying me 12 or was it 12? They were paying me $13 an hour. And then they realized later on, and I didn't even realize this either, uh, for about six months, they were paying me 15 bucks an hour by accident. <gasps> and the boss says, can we get that money back? I said, nope. Sorry. It's in the account. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the visa account, nothing I can do. It's not a debit account. <laughs> it's an enter, not an exit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, listen, I, uh, I, I, I'm excited to see, because I'm assuming that if uh, if you're going to be filming, you're going to be putting some of the living sit- you know, quarters on the vlog, so that should be out in the next couple of weeks, I'm assuming. Yeah, the vlog is a little bit behind, which we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the uh, the home opener coming up this weekend and then a couple other uh, specialty jerseys. But first, a word from our second sponsor of the show, the team at Manscaped.com. You'll see my beard tapered up, tapered up for media day. I got the uh, the jawline, the uh, Leonidas jawline, the day I love to talk about so much here on the show. Uh, tapered up with the Manscaped Beard Hedger. The Beard Hedger has 20 different lengths. It has a 60-minute battery life, and it is waterproof. Use the code BISCUIT. 
B-I-Z-K-I-T for 20% off and free shipping only from manscaped.com. Again, go to the link in the video description or the Apple Podcast and Spotify notes. Click on that link and then boom, pick yourself up at Manscaped Beard Hedger. I'm tip up your beard today and thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring the show as they do every single week. Uh, Dave, what do you think? Speak, well, like, speaking of shaving, shout out to anyone who is uh, pr- participating in November this year, raising awareness for men's health. Another good reminder to go get yourself checked. And it's uh, never too early because, uh, you know, we don't talk about that stuff enough. So between taking care of your balls and doing the mustache thing, we got you covered. Have I ever told you about my, uh, well, not, I, I didn't come up with it, but the philosophies behind growing hair or no? No. I was telling one of the guys today, and actually Yanni Lirakos, who is building my bedroom, I was telling him this today because I think he is the best looking man in the Fed Zeno, in the FPHL. And I'll put a video up on the video version of the show, some clips that I've gotten from around the rink this week, uh, just to show you how good looking this man is. But I was telling him, if you can't grow it up here, you grow a beard. If you mm-hmm. can't grow it here, you grow it down there. You got to have something going on. Well, I'll be honest with you. I was actually, I got into a bit of a uh, a, a bar stool debate, we'll call it, uh, with a colleague of mine. And uh, he's a bald guy and he's uh, he's tried, uh, you know, wearing a wig. He's tried doing, you know, you know, the long hair. But for the most part, he he wears a hat and he, you know, says, that, oh, yeah, you, you've got the long hair. And I said, man, I'll be honest with you. I said, I probably wear a hat just as much, if not more, than you do. So in the grand scheme of things, I mean, we're showing our hair or lack thereof about the you know equivalent amount of time. And I said, in the grand scheme of things, a hat is just a cotton wig. You know, if you're always wearing a hat and you're just becoming a hat guy, I mean, I, most people don't even know what my hair looks like because I wear a toque or a hat or something so much. So, yeah, I, I do agree, though. You do see that. If you don't get the hair up here, you get the hair down here. But look at you. You just got the whole thing. The whole head, head to toe covered in werewolf hair. For the time being. But uh, by the way, for anybody else out there balding, I don't know if we ever talked about this. I take, um, uh, you ever heard of like Propecia, like Finasteride or no? No. It's like a, um, it's like a five milligram tablet. I take like a quarter of it daily and it's for like hair loss. And because like my hairline started like running away when I was like 18, 19, I was like, holy shit, Cletus, I got to get this fixed. And so I ran, <laughs> down, <laughs> so I ran down to the, uh, like to a doctor's office and they prescribed us like a quarter tablet and it's kind of stopped my hairline from running away. So the hair is good. Uh, my dad told me that he was bald at 25, so we're going to be fixing that. And yeah, I uh, I was lucky enough to have uh, both my uh, grandfathers uh, pass away with full heads of hair on their head. But my brother, for whatever reason, his uh, his same thing. He started going bald early. I got another buddy of mine who's been uh, fighting it for years. I think Ni- Nioxin was a, a, a shampoo he was using for a while to kind of stop the uh, the bleeding. But it's amazing how far we've come with so much technology, and we still can't figure out male pattern baldness. Yeah, we can get a man on the moon. What else? We can have like nuclear submarines, mm-hmm. but we can't fix my bald spot. Can't figure it out. Some of the most powerful people in the world, and they, I'm sure they would give up a good portion of their fortunes if they could figure that out, and no one's been able to do it yet. Conspiracy theory alert. You ready, Dave? Put the tinfoil I'm, hat on. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. All right. They don't want to fix it because there's more money in having the problem than actually fixing it. Boom. Well, that's a that that's whoo. Look at that. Look at that rabbit hole just kind of getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Don't you try and drag me down into there. But I do want to hear your conspiracy theory that uh, you had about the game. Oh, yes. All right. This is this is a good. One. And then Joe Pace likes this one. All right. So uh, on the FPHL website, they have tagged me for all 12 goals from this past weekend's game against Whitfield. Now, uh, I did there notice are, that on the weed sheet. I did notice that. Yep. Yep. So it's everywhere. So a lot of people are saying, oh, my God, try to give up 12 goals. Well, I'll give up eight. Still doesn't look good, but I gave up no. eight. I did not give up a uh, two touchdowns, by, by the way. This, it's not the uh, Biloxi football team here. Um, but uh, here's a conspiracy theory, theory for you. So I have been very outspoken about how I feel about uh, domestic violence in the FPHL. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I got traded for saying that we should have some respect for women within the locker room and within the team. I'm just saying, again, that will be a Patreon-exclusive episode one day, but I've been very outspoken about how I feel about how we, as professional hockey players and athletes and men, should be treating women, okay? I don't think, and not that I think, I know a lot of the higher-up people in the FPHL don't like that. They want me to just shut up and let it be. I say my morals and my standards and my values are worth more than anything else that you could try to buy me off for. And I think that they're deciding, conspiracy theory alert, conspiracy theory theory alert, they're trying to tag me with the 12 goals to try to make me look as bad as possible so it makes me uh, as bearable as possible online so I lose credibility. The podcast loses credibility. The vlog loses credibility. And then nobody wants to have me playing for them moving forward. Conspiracy theory alert. My tinfoil hat is off. Thoughts? Uh, I've heard crazier. I've heard crazier. I think it's just a um, 
it's a unfortunate coincidence because it's not like they've got a whole shelf full of people taking stats down all the time. It was, oh, let's see if we can get this up online eventually. You know, hopefully somebody signs at the bottom. What's the referee's name again? Uh, it, it, things fall through the cracks all the time. I, I think that one may have been a coincidence, but I do like me a good conspiracy. There's no doubt about that. So who's to say? Uh, a buddy of mine was playing over in the K. He actually just retired. Uh, came back to Canada and ended up cutting his finger in his first day at his new job doing HVAC, but that's for another day. Work, workers' but, comp right there. That's 12 yeah. months right there, baby. 12 months he, paid. <laughs> he, he had told me stories about having to go and pull the tape, literally pull the tape and show them saying, look, I got an assist on this one. I literally passed the puck to the goal scorer because they wouldn't credit him because he had bonuses in his contract for the amount of points he would get. And they were trying to shave down, so they went like they, the team was going to the league, going, "Okay, take it that assist away, take that assist away, because we're not going to pay him that much." Ooh, that that is a good conspiracy theory. Well, is that a conspiracy theory though? Well, I mean, he doesn't have actual proof that they were doing that, but it's because they, oh yeah, 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 okay, fine, fine, and then some of them did, some of them didn't, but yeah, he literally had to go and fight to get his money on his bonus. Yeah, I'll tell you this: minor pro hockey is shiesty. It is. Uh, if you ha- listen, I'll just put it this way: if you have bad anxiety, this is not for you. I, I promise you, it is not for you if you got bad anxiety playing professional hockey. Guaranteed. Well, listen, just because it's minor pro hockey doesn't mean it doesn't happen in the NHL. I can tell you a story. I'll, I'll leave his name out of it, but he was bought out of his contract in the National Hockey League. And, of course, when it gets reported, you know, it's things like, I bought him out of his contract. What was left in his contract? 4.5 schmil? That's a good deal. Even half the taxes. That's 2.25. It's pretty good. He said he saw maybe, maybe $400,000 of that. Maybe. You know, and it's just kind of like, you want to keep playing? Shut up and go. Where did the other two million go? It just—he wasn't paid. Hmm. So he ended up le- he he left the league as well. Once his contract was bought out, his agents kind of said, "Go and play overseas." And so the NHL has kind of said, "Well, you know, that is one thing we don't have to worry about anymore." You know, the more we talk about this, the more I'm looking forward to retirement and uh, turning the YouTube vlog into a travel channel and um, uh, having my two beagle puppies. I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> they're easier. You know, they're easier to travel with than a Saint Bernard. I can promise you that. Pissing on you in the Mexico airport, right? In Cancun airport, that is correct. Yeah, that's that's tough. But there are a couple things that are not so tough to do, and that is showing up to our home opener. Uh, I guess by the time the podcast goes up on Sunday, this will already be up, and the home opener will be done. But our home opener is against the Columbus River Dragons coming up on Saturday. Uh, we do have a couple of promotional nights coming up. Now, we have a uh, military night next week. We, we have an awesome military jersey, and I believe we're playing the Port Huron Prowlers for that night. Um, also, we are doing a rebrand night in January. We are rebranding. We will no longer be the Mississippi Seawolves. We are going to be the Biloxi Bone Crushers. How awesome is that? Really? Yeah, we're doing a rebrand. We are the Biloxi Bone Crushers for the month or at some point in January. Now, okay, uh, bone crushers, that's just for, for marketing purposes, or is it just, uh, I mean, is it, is it in reference to something? That's a good question. I didn't ask any more questions because I'm an idiot. Well, because here's the thing. Uh, if, if we want to go back to the whole dinosaur in the Gulf of Mexico thing, that would make sense. Oh, the Biloxi dinosaur bone crushers. That makes that does make sense, yeah. I look forward to seeing that third jersey. I am very excited for that as well. What do you think of the jerseys behind me, though? Obviously, you can't see in the uh, audio version, but we have... The third one, the red one, it's like a St. Louis Blues mid two thousands, like late nineties one. We got the white Mississippi jersey and the blue one. They look beautiful. What do you think, Dave? Can you see those? I, I like the color scheme. I really do. It looks it looks awesome. I really like the red one too. I think the red one looks fantastic. It's like a blend of like St. Louis Pittsburgh mid two thousands. Yeah, and it, uh, listen, the the logo itself, eh, it's okay. It, it to me, it's kind of taking the Pittsburgh Penguin kind of uh, cartoonish animal and doing a wolf version of that, which is okay. It's okay. I don't hate it. Okay. I, I like it. As far as the crowd goes, though, uh, so the most people we had in the building last season was 9,000 people. 9,000 strong. Not a, not a Watertown 9,000, an actual 9,000 counted heads in the building. And uh, for a home opener on Saturday, we're expecting probably about 4,000-ish, maybe mid-4,000s. Amazing. That's odd. I love how much you love hockey, you Southern beauties. How awesome is that, though? We're going to have 4,000 people in here screaming all over the Columbus River Dragons, and we're going to come home with a W. Ah, I'm looking forward to it. Do you know if you're starting uh, either of the games this weekend? No word. No word as of right now. Uh, to my knowledge, our other goalie, Blake Wyrick, is still injured. He's coming back from uh, like a pec surgery, so I don't know if he's going to be ready to go for this weekend. But for the time being, me and Shep's are ready to rock and roll. We're uh, two big 6'4 and 6'5 beauties. Uh, well, one of us is a beauty, I should say. 
And uh, yeah, ready to rock and roll. Amazing. I look forward to next week. I look forward to the blog coming out. I, uh, I'm i actually going to be The vlog in... will catch up, by the way. The vlog is about two, two and a half weeks behind, just for those wondering. So it should have my first start against Binghamton coming up on Sunday. So by the time this comes up, my first start versus Binghamton will be out and should be live. And then the Mississippi getting traded from Watertown Saga should start unfolding in a couple days from this podcast going up. Uh, so yes, everything should catch up in uh, real time. Apologies. Uh, the podcast is very easy to produce and get out in real time. The vlog... It's about eight to ten hours of editing per video, and it's it's a lot more hands-on. And I am a one-man crew of the editing, the filming, the uploading, everything. So be patient. I'm sorry. I wish I could do it in real time, but I just don't have the manpower, and I can't find somebody who edits the same way that I do. And that's part of the personality. Does that make sense, Dave? Hundred percent on the same way with audio, man. I am the same way. I totally understand. Hey, take us out the way they would down in Creole and Biloxi, Mississippi. Well, on behalf of uh, all my southern friends down here in Biloxi, my name is Travis Ridgen, number 31 for the Mississippi Seawolves, soon to be the Biloxi Bone Crushers on the other end of this podcast. He is signing off for the week. He has had the number one morning radio show in the city of Winnipeg for over 20 years, and he is the glue that keeps his podcast together and keeps that gumbo tight. He can't stir the gumbo, but he can definitely lick the ladle in the words of Johnny Knoxville and Bad Grandpa. We do a new podcast every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 in Winnipeg, 9 in Calgary, 8 in Vancouver, British Columbia. Please hit the subscribe button for more podcasts on the YouTube video version. Leave a comment. David and I are always in the comments chatting it up with y'all. And if you are on the Apple Spotify version, leave a review because we would love to hear what you think. I will see you. Dave will see you next week in Biloxi. Bye, y'all.